Show me the money. Money makes the world go round, or at least it keeps your shop profitable. Of course, it's important to get paid for your jobs. Fear of finance is a very real part of your day. This episode of SOS Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. I'm Doug Kaufman with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to Shop Owner Solutions. We're exploring some of the nightmares that today's shop owners face, and we're talking about those 3 a.m. panics, the things that either wake you up at, in the middle of the night or keep you from falling asleep in the first place. Of course, finance is one of those nightmares a lot of people face, and to help make some sound financial decisions, I'm happy to welcome our guest today, Charlie Marcotte from American Pride Automotive in Hampton Roads, Virginia, and Jesse Medoff from 360 Payments in San Jose, California. Also with me is Vic Tarasic from Shop Owner Coach. Vic, there are a lot of options and a lot of curveballs that people need to think about when it comes to getting paid for their work. Mm -hmm. How can you be sure you'll actually get paid? That is huge. Getting paid is I would say extremely important. Most One of the most important things in the shop, besides giving a great customer experience. I think back on getting paid to 1991. I just moved into my new shop, finished up a head job. Now, in, in, the, in that dollars, I was charged this guy 900 bucks. He stopped by, by that, the shop that night and said, Hey, Vic, can I pick up my car and your wife pay you in the morning? I'm sure. I haven't <laughs> seen him since. <laughs> So, Did you cash that check right away? Or? Yeah, well, unfortunately, he didn't even write me a check. It was a promissory note. So so today we're going to spend time with, with Jesse and Steve. We're going to talk about getting paid in advance to ensure that you don't have the same experience I did. Getting paid in advance takes that, that payment issue off the table and gives you opportunities to spend time with your customer. So let's get talk, talking with Jesse and Charlie. So Jesse... How many shops are you are using payment in advance? Uh, we had, especially last year in, in 2020 with the pandemic, it was a flurry of new shops coming in, really starting to, and that was one of the main things, is starting to use the, the remote pay, the text to pay. Um, I mean, we just in the month of April last year, we had over 300 shops sign up with us. And one of the main leading reasons was that remote payment, um, you know, with the, obviously with shops being completely closed in their waiting rooms, that was uh, some of the ways that shops were staying open, the only way they could get paid. Right. So it, it was a, a big, big thing last year. But, you know, we, we came out with text to pay, uh, gosh, almost three years ago. And uh, it was a it was a nice to have. A lot of shops were jumping on board, kind of the, the up and, and the front runner shops that were out there. Um, thought it was, it was, you know, cool technology and things like that. And then uh, when the pandemic hit, it turned into a, a must have. So it's, uh, it's been a, a really beneficial thing. We've seen a lot of shops starting to use now, even after the pandemic. So the industry that was pushed towards it last year. Uh, now, Charlie. Correct. Charlie, I've already called you Steve, and I apologize for that. <laughs> no so, <but> problem. <laughs> so, Charlie, you've been in the business for a little while. Probably about you and I started our shops around the same time. You've probably experienced some of the same stuff I have. So, have you had some of those, uh, you know, businesses or customers promise to pay? Well, you were you were right to call them nightmare stories. Uh, you know, being paid for the work that you do is a necessary facet of running a good business. Uh, and there are times when it's you know it, it's questionable, and you're looking at the person across the counter trying to make a judgment call. You know, do, what do I do? And I'm sure you were doing what you felt was best for your customer back when you were doing that head job. Unfortunately, he you know, wasn't the good person that you thought that he was. Right. Uh, having a reliable solution to that problem makes all the difference. That's a challenging thing when you're uh, 
yet when you can't depend on a reliable customer that you've you've known for a long time, you know that's disappointing, obviously. But when you're making that judgment call on a first time customer, man, you're you're really setting yourself out there. You could be out hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars mm-hmm. if if you're not sure you're going to get paid for that work. Oh, in, in a heartbeat, you know, it's, you know, repairs are expensive these days and, you know, buyer's remorse is a real issue. Uh, waiting to be paid, even on an account, uh, is, is more dangerous than just having a clean transaction where you're paid as the car is delivered. Well, and, and I don't know what it is about our industry that we tend to feel like we should extend credit. It, you know, I, I, I've had to share with a number of people that I worked with alongside the good shops. And I, I asked them, I said, what business are you guys in? Well, they're auto repair. Are you in a banking business? They're like, no. Okay. Everyone has the ability to pay. And what I like about you know, having the ability to, to get paid in advance is it really it doesn't it pushes it off to them as a responsibility and it absolves you of having to feel like a bank mm-hmm. but you got to have the capacity to say no yeah let's talk about that number one let's let's review for those of us who who may not be familiar with accepting payments remotely at this point uh, how does that process work and then as Vic said getting paid in advance how can you possibly get paid for something that you haven't done yet Yeah, the uh, the process of getting uh, some sort of remote payment. So what we've we've done at 360 is we've created a simple solution for shops to be able to do text to pay, where you know they can just shoot a quick text to a customer. There's a link right in the text. They just click that link, and it pops up a payment page. It shows uh, how much they owe. It shows uh, in certain cases the the work that's been done, the invoice, everything like that. And then uh, the customer can just, you know, click a button, put in their credit card. Some of you have Apple Pay with iPhones. You can now just scan your credit card. So in, in a couple clicks, it's all paid for. The cool thing is once it's paid for, when they come into the shop, they don't have to do anything. They're just picking up their keys, uh, having conversation and out the door. So it also streamlines the whole checkout process. And then there's also the option for email to pay. Uh, with a, with a lot of uh, our partners and integrations, where you know that's a, a lot of times easier for some of your your fleet accounts, where they have accounts on file. You're dealing with other businesses, and uh, you can just shoot an email off to their accounting team. They just same thing. They just click a link in the email, put in the credit card information, and it's paid for. So it just streamlines that that really that whole process. So so Charlie, you have four stores. And yes. do you have a percentage or kind of a rough idea of the folks that use credit cards? How many will, will use text to pay in advance of, of the pickup of the vehicle? So like all technologies um, and processes, they are adopted by humans. And the, the number or the percentage differs from shop to shop based on the adoption or the saturation from our service advisors. Uh, some advisors are quicker to jump on technology than others. Uh, if So as, to answer your question, the percentage of people using credit cards um, you know, has got to be 95%. I mean, right. we rarely make cash deposits. Uh, checks, you know, they're almost a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the text to pay option. I know you've mentioned a few time, few times the pay in advance. Um, payment in advance is not really something that we would ever pursue or or ask for, but we do ask for deposits. Uh, and and our process is when a repair uh, is with a customer who's new, uh, and it's in excess of fifteen hundred dollars, that we feel it's fair to ask that customer to go ahead and make a 50% deposit to show good faith in advance. Okay. Uh, yeah, it covers our cost of materials. And the text to pay option or emailing to pay is just extremely convenient. It's very professional. Uh, and then there's no kickback. You know, a customer is not weary. Now, they would have been weary three years ago. You okay. know, so technology is tied to timing. 
the timing of this technology is perfect for right now. So, so you talked about adoption. Did you have to get buy-in from all your advisors, or was there a process you went through to roll out the text-to-pay feature? Well, as you know, Vic, uh, when you're running a business, you have to get buy-in from everybody for everything. Right. Like uh, uh, replace the toilet paper roll when you're done with it. You know, everything <laughs> requires buy-in. Yep. Uh, but yes, it, it, it does. And, and there's a little bit of weariness um, from a person who's having to sell. You know, so you've built a relationship with somebody you probably don't know, and you want to be really sure of the words that you use and the technology that you present, uh, because if it blows up in your face, it looks bad on you. Um, the people who've embraced this technology have nothing but great things to say because it makes them, it makes their job easy, you know, which is really what we all want. Um, that, that awkward transaction when somebody's standing in front of you and they slide the credit card into the machine, you know, it's, it's, we've been doing this for a long time, but I, even I still have a little bit of trepidation that they may, mm -hmm. they may be declined. Mm -hmm. and, and when a person has a declined transaction, it's awkward. You know, you, you empathize for their situation, uh, text to pay that's gone. Right. You know, it's it just, it's just a great solution for the times that we're in. That's a great point. With your four different stores, I would imagine that you have maybe four different demographics. Maybe there are uh, challenges in some cases with customers being uh, being financially ready to make that commitment. Do you find that uh, that training and an explanation of the process is different from location to location? You know, I really don't. Um, the The difference is in the people that you're talking to and their you know their adoption of that technology. Uh, in business, you know, we're constantly training our customers, and our customers are training us. You know, for what they want, what they need. But we're training our customers, uh, and we may be training them to drop off as opposed to wait for a repair. Uh, we're training them to uh, let me lock your keys in your car, and you can pick it up after hours, or Hey, we close at 5:30. I need you to be here by 5:30. Uh, we're training them to accept uh, remote payments, and, and and everybody has their own rate of acceptance um, of how well they absor absorb that new technology. But it's our job to train for convenience. Uh, we always want to dominate our market. Um, three of our stores are within a a six mile proximity of each other. So if you were to draw a three mile radius, you know, within that six mile circumference, you know, there's there's three locations and the demographics are different. How people respond is different, but it's really because our our rate of training our customers is different based on our people behind the counter. Okay. And Charlie, you mentioned uh, timing. It's, uh, it's interesting because when we first came out with text to pay there was some adop adoption, but it was it wasn't uh, you know across the board, and it was you know certain areas like where we're in Silicon Valley, you know people are a lot more used to payments on their phone and doing that kind of things. But we noticed you know when when the pandemic hit and everybody was forced to do that, you know the the <laughs> older demographic that may not be as uh, as adopting in normally got forced to do it. And what we found yes. with a lot of our shops after talking to them, you know, when they're all reopened and everything, that demographic that had pushed back in the beginning is still using it now. So once they, you know, were kind of forced to do it and realized how easy it was, then it's like, okay, this is great. I mean, it, I haven't been in a supermarket in over a year because now I can press a button on my phone and they, they put it in my trunk or they deliver it to It's my so convenient, door. yeah. 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 So it's like I hope that doesn't go away because <laughs> I don't think I'm no, going to ever go in a supermarket again. <laughs> so Jesse made a great point about the timing. Um, we took on the text to pay option prior to the pandemic. And we we did that primarily because of my relationship with Lisa Coyle. Uh, the CEO of, of 360 Payments. I just think that you guys run a terrific operation, and I trust 
uh, her her take on technology. So we we adopted it, and the the percentage of customers, or I should say, the percentage of times that we asked people to use text to pay was probably as a uh, a, a much lower percentage than right now. It was an as needed basis. So if we needed to ask a person to pay remotely, we did. But now, since the pandemic, it's become part of our delivery process. Uh, it just makes sense for the customer. The customers were really quick to adopt it uh, during the pandemic, as you mentioned, because they wanted to have touchless delivery. You know, so if you're truly going to be do, doing it touchless, um, what better way than text to pay? Right. And we had the occasional customer who came in with their credit card in a Ziploc container and they wanted to give it to us, you know, they're trying their best to do a touch to pay or a touchless <laughs> delivery. Um, that was super awkward. Uh, you know, we, we just love the electronic virtual process. So it's convenient and people are more comfortable with, with uh, paying, using their cell phones, using their tablets, however they pay. How secure is it? Is there a concern uh, from customers about their their you know their banking information or you know hacking of their credit cards from our standpoint um, sh we haven't really heard too much from shops saying that their customers are giving them pushback about it um, you know everybody shops on Amazon everybody shops online this is the exact same thing it's you know if if you're used to shopping online, you look at the HTTPS, the S makes sure it's a secure website, um, those types of things uh, we can point people to, but everything we do is 100% PCI compliant, make sure that security is our, is our first step. Um, and so I think from a customer standpoint, you know, they're so used to shopping online now that most people you know, don't even bat an eye at it. Um, from a shop standpoint, you know, it's, it's kind of replacing the phone order. So any, anytime you would take a credit card over the phone previously, mm -hmm. um, this is a, an easy, more convenient way to replace that, you know, after hour pickups and things like that, that you guys were mentioning. Um, and that's kind of the, the streamlined process, but from a security standpoint, the other thing, the customer is dealing with their own credit card information. They're not giving their credit card to some buddy at a shop that they've never met uh, over the phone. So I think it actually feels more secure for the, the end user, for the card holder, because they're not having anybody else touch their full credit card number, their expiration date. And then for the shop, you know, a lot of times you, you try to manage your, your team as much as possible, but every once in a while, you never know, there's could be somebody writing down a full credit card number on a piece of paper and hopefully that goes sh gets shredded, but it could go in the trash and somebody mm -hmm. finds it. It could go in someone's pocket and that gets taken. So in that aspect, it's also more secure because no one's dealing with or, or touching uh, that customer's credit card, full credit card data. So is there liability to a shop that takes a credit card number over the phone and ends up with it in their shop, what, what can happen to them from a legal standpoint? I, th I think that we saw what happened, you know, with some data breaches with Target, you know, several years ago, and that that affected their valuation tremendously. I think that they actually are still down in value because of that breach. Uh, when I, you know, I, we've got a waiting room attached to the, the front counter. And when a person calls in, if they're comfortable in giving their phone number, or their, their credit card number, you hear the advisor say, okay, so what's your credit card number? Three, seven, four, eight. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're giving the digits down while other people may be listening. Right. Uh, as an owner, I'm always looking for, you know, liability concerns. Right. Uh, if they're writing it down, it's what? On a sticky note? Or in the past, you know, I, I feel bad saying this, but in the past customers, we've got great customers. And they would say, I'll tell you what, I, I don't want to give you the credit card number every time. Just let me give it to you, put it in your system, charge my card at the end of the, the process, put my keys under the floor mat, I'll come pick it up. Right. So we would just go to the notes section of the repair order, you know, copy, paste, you know, process the credit card that way. 
uh, hope the expiration date was still good, yep. you know, but how much of a liability is that? Oh, you know, huge. it's tremendous. But I didn't know any better uh, a few years ago before this technology existed. We did it for the convenience of the customer. But today, I would never let somebody store a customer's credit card or write it down or repeat it back to them on the telephone. It's right. just, it's crazy. I can feel you on that. Well, you mentioned we, actually... We a big piece of that is is having that credit card number on the invoice. So that's now stored in your computer system. Mm -hmm. And if someone gets into your computer system, you're liable for storing now hundreds of credit card numbers or however many were in there. So that is uh, is definitely something you don't want to do in your shop is have full credit, even if it's in a locked cabinet. You never know. It's still li unneeded liability that you're putting on your shop. Yeah, and, and you nailed it right there. And, it, and an owner's job is to reduce liability at every opportunity. And this th this does take a significant portion of liability off the table. Yeah. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration of dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient to them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. Vic, you and I have had some conversations about things that have gone wrong. Charlie, have you had, I mean, were you lucky or did were there things that kind of steered you to the, uh, to the idea that I've got to get out of this method of handling credit cards? <clears throat> well, I think if, if we're all honest with ourselves, uh, we're all very lucky uh, in business because there's a lot of liability everywhere we look. Um, and you're correct, Vic. You know, our job is to, to limit liability at every turn. Mm -hmm. We had a situation uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, a truck came in. I, I think it was like 2013 Super Duty. Needed the transmission. It was from a fleet account or it was from a fleet that was headquartered outside of Virginia. So it was a national fleet, transmission was bad. The person who brings it in is the driver of the vehicle. It's not the owner of the company, you know, it's a big company. So, and we do our normal process, get approval, um, did the transmission. And when it came time to be paid, you know, he comes in, we let him know it was done. Uh, the driver comes in, I'm here to pick up the vehicle. Great. you know how would you like to pay for it oh well that's you know that's where the you know the, the headquarters takes care of that okay you know well we need to talk to them first uh and he was almost surprised that we weren't going to let the vehicle leave uh, before it was paid for mm -hmm. uh, but we have to protect ourselves uh so then we find out okay now who do we need to talk to and that went to two or three different people when finally the person who handles ap was on the telephone she didn't know about a truck in Virginia having a transmission. So now you have an approval process, but we we track everything. All of our communications are, are able to be screenshotted to show that we did the right process. Um, the end result at that moment was, you know, they were tight on cash. They're a big company, successful company, but they're awaiting on their uh, AR to be brought back up to make payments to us mm -hmm. so we had to wait three weeks uh and in the meantime they wanted to send us a check which you know what do you do then it's an out-of-state check right. how long do i wait for it to clear before i let the vehicle go uh the text to pay option is is the only option uh in their case they had to wait until their credit card was paid down enough to go ahead and have that charge hit the credit card mm -hmm. uh, but you know you you're dealing with a person who's ahead of the AP. She didn't sign the repair order. She never stepped foot into your shop. You know, you've got signature concerns. All of these things are erased with this newer technology. Right. I remember when, when grocery stores uh, first started us, started having us sign the, um, the credit card terminal. And remember that little window was <laughs> super small mm. and you know that you're okay so you want me to sign this and yeah yeah just sign there well you can't really sign your signature in a spot that's too small you know i've got a big sloppy signature 
Uh, and then now I'm giving my credit card to my kids. There's no more signature. I mean, that a signature these days is, is not a sign of security. Nobody really verifies it. When was the last time somebody looked at the back of your credit card to match the signature mm -hmm. to what they're seeing in front of them? Right. Uh, the, the, the times change, you know, and we're changing with those times. So to protect ourselves, we want all the best technology that shows a historical timestamp of what was done with who, when, what was said, so that if I'm ever questioned, I'm protected. I'll be honest, I don't think half the cards in my wallet are even signed to begin with, so uh, <laughs> nobody would have anything to compare it to. <clears throat> yeah, my my credit cards all say, ask for signature. Yep. You know, on, on the back. Nobody has asked me for a signature. I mean, you just... You throw the stupid thing around like it's trash, mm -hmm. and you just trust it's going to be taken care of. You know, there's, um, it's it's a crazy time out there. So I I want to ask a question regarding the uh, the time that is left between taking the payment at the at the counter with with your advisor. How are your advisors utilizing that time with the customer because they're not taking payments from them? Well, the, we're all about relationships. Okay. Um, I've always told, told my customers or my advisors that the most important conversation is something non-automotive. You know, right. So if you're going to have a conversation, I prefer it to be about their dog or about uh, where did you go to school? You know, what's your favorite restaurant? Uh, do your kids play soccer? You know, which team do they play for? Those are the conversations that matter. Um, as I've said before, the I still have a little bit of anxiety around that. You slide that repair order in front of the customer, and you're asking for their credit card, or you're asking them to pay the credit card, or pay it by credit card, or however. You know, it's that it's that time of silence. It's awkward. You know, I don't like it because it it's really a test of that relationship. If if I can remove that anxiety from that process and focus on real meaningful conversation conversation that's not automotive related then then our relationship is is on a much better level um, and I, I i think all frontline people all advisors probably feel the same way right well and you create a you create a tighter bond with your customer and you know, you know charlie charlie's you know, team and and his customers i have a much tighter bond when you get to you know, the other personal side of it, like you said, how's their dog? You know, the other, are they going on vacation? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the kid, you know, let's say the kids might have gotten married or, or there, there was an illness in the family. Definitely, there's just so many things that I think if a shop owner were to take that transactional element away and take the time to bond with their customer, we'd see a lot less turnover in our customer base. And you probably don't have a very high turnover in your customer base. Well, I think it's always higher than I would like. Sure. Um, we were just talking about this on a telephone call yesterday, uh, and the, the, the message of the call was, what did we learn from the pandemic, and how will we continue doing it after? You know, we don't want to return to what life was like in 2019. Uh, there's a, a term, cognitive dissidence, mm -hmm. uh, where people kind of go back to the level that they are comfortable at. And, you know, COVID pushed us to be comfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, it pushed us into asking our customers to drop the vehicle and not wait. That was uncomfortable at first. Uh, we learned to like it. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked our customers to, to pay remotely. Now I've seen shops, they have a, a bank of little lock boxes on the front of their vehicle. Yep. You can text your customer their code for their specific box, place their key in the box. They've paid remotely. They come after hours or even during hours. They punch their code, open the door, grab their key, drive their car away. Touchless. I mean, it's, we we track everything electronically. Um, why not totally embrace it? But the important thing is to take what we've learned from the past 15 months and carry it forward let that be our our new normal 
you know, mm-hmm. don't go back to the old ways because we were comfortable doing that. I think that's a huge point. Um, we, we did a survey with a lot of our, our text to pay customers. And that was one of the biggest things is building a relationship with your customer. The second thing is they get to review all the work that is needed to be done. And previously, all the conversation was around how are you going to pay for this job? And what a lot of our shops that I didn't expect at all was they said a lot of times we have the time to build a relationship and review the recommendations. And so they've actually been able to book more work and book the next job because they're saying, okay, you need to do all this stuff and, uh, you know, and, and still continue to build that relationship with our customer. Right. That was going to be my point, uh, Charlie, when it comes to the, the invoice that the customer receives. The old days, well, even, even today, in many cases, they'll get a slip of paper from the, from the service advisor, and that's the first time they're hearing the, the final total. They're seeing on the invoice that there's shop fees and there's environmental things, and there's things that they didn't figure they'd ever have to pay for. That's your job, right? And so they've got, you know, now they're already coming in going, well, I'm paying for this, and then you've got to worry about the credit card going through. So in that awkward silence, where the customer could be saying, you know, oh, you're going on vacation. Have you know? Have you thought about the the work that needs to be done to make sure your car is ready to drive, you know, 400 miles or whatever? Yeah, there's just a, that uncomfortable you know, situation where you're not friends anymore. Right. You know, you've done the work, but you're not friends anymore <laughs> at that point. Yeah, there's um, when I visit the shops, one of the the touch points I look for is when a customer leaves the building. So they've, they've come in, they've paid, they've gotten their keys, they take their repair order and they leave. What do they do when they exit the building? You know, if, if they stop 10 feet away from the front door, open up their invoice and start to examine it, you know, that's a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was, there was not a comfortable delivery or the person was too uncomfortable questioning something while they were standing in front of the, the advisor. Um, having things sent to them electronically allows them to review it and to become comfortable. Uh, and when they leave, they know that they got a good value for the money that they spent, that it was a good choice. It was a good investment. The idea of using a lockbox to pick up the keys just to make a totally contactless uh, situation seems, I mean, it's, to me, that's a new idea. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's it's been done in other ways. But what else is new, Jesse? What else is coming down the road when it comes to, you know, customer interaction that uh, is going to make it easier, quicker, less painful? Yeah, totally. Actually, uh, we were. I was talking uh, a couple months ago to a shop that uh, was saying he he has had a couple customers that he's never met. So a, a car got towed in at night. He talked to him over the phone, told him what the job was. He texted, you know, finished the job, texted him a payment. They paid remotely. He put the keys in a lockbox outside and they picked it up after hours. So there was literally no interaction with the customer. And he's like, I was, I would never have been able to do that before. Mm -hmm. Charlie, can you imagine that situation in the past where you, you, you... Oh my God. You know, the, you think about, what George Orwell would say right about now. And, you know, we've read sci-fi magazines. Uh, we've heard about autonomous vehicles that <laughs> it's, it's, it's comical, but I'm afraid it might also be true. Uh, autonomous vehicles that they know when it's time for their service, they email their driver, you know, by text or, or by some form of communication. The, the, the dealer or the repair shop has another autonomous vehicle show up in their driveway to swap spots. Hmm. The the car in need of service drives itself to your repair shop for you to service it. You know, Jesse mentioned there are some owners that have never met their customer. I mean, can, can you imagine the transactions in the future? You know, I don't know how far away where cars are just driving themselves into your parking lot to be worked on. I mean, it's it's possible, but I'm pretty sure that if that became true, those people are not going to come into your shop to sign the credit card slip. <laughs> they want to be right. they want to be doing that remotely. Have you noticed over the past 
15 months or so, uh, a change in what you would determine customer satisfaction to be? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I love the service industry across all industries. Um, I think that the customers have learned to accept less service, less quality of service. Um, people are more frustrated, more frantic. Um, when, when, the, when the water table drops or the level of the bar drops and people are accepting less as acceptable, that makes an opportunity for us who want to dominate, who want to be the very best, it makes it easier because the, the separation from you to your competition uh, is becomes greater. You know, you can be outstanding today doing something that before you would have been good. You know, so the another conversation we had yesterday on the telephone was what will allow you to be, the, to be the very best to dominate is not going to be how quickly you adopt EV technology. It's always going to be the quality of the relationship with the consumer. You know, the, the intentional, meaningful conversation that you have, the comfort level, the trust that they have. Uh, trust means absolutely everything. It doesn't just allow them to become a key dropper, hand you the keys and say, treat it like it was your wife's car having a real relationship and solid trust allows you to make a mistake and to have them forgive you for that mistake because they have a relationship and from time to time we're all going to make some mistakes um, the the extra time that we have with customers <clears throat> the clarity of communication that we now have <clears throat> allows us to have just a much better relationship uh, with our customers uh, but i think Today is a great day to be outstanding uh, because our competition, who's not embracing this technology, uh, I don't want to say they're becoming less, but the difference between you and them is now greater. What would make things even better for you in your shop? So right now, our number one threat uh, to, our, to American pride is that we're telling too many customers no. Uh, no is and we can't get you in right away it's not convenient so auto repair is a need-based service uh, you can't you can't encourage the need they either need it or they don't so once once the person has the need they choose based on relationship and convenience um, what what we really need is more efficiency you know we need to be able to process more opportunity within the same number of hours per day. Um, and there are some new technologies out there, uh, one that I've heard about recently that we're going to adopt as soon as we can, and that's all about bay efficiency. You know, how, how can we produce more in the same footprint of the building with the same number of people? Because uh, we, all, we all have a finite amount of opportunity or capacity uh, because the opportunity right now is higher than it's ever been. But the biggest threat to me is having to tell my good, loyal customers no, which is really inviting them to go visit the competition. Well, gentlemen, let's 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 wrap this up, and I'm going to touch on a few tie points. So doing text-to-pay, it takes a banker, it takes a, the judgment call out of the the relationship. There is no better time to institute text-to-pay than today due to the pandemic. So if you're on the fence been thinking about text to pay, now's the time to think about it. When you're adopting it, get buy-in for your from your entire team, your entire service advisor team. And then also you're going to need to sell it to the customer. And once they get used to it, they're going to be a lot more comfortable with it. It takes the liability of taking a credit card number over the phone out of your hands and protects you. Because it, as Jesse said, it's PCI compliant. It allows a more personal conversation and relationship building at the counter. You get to know your customer more. Rather than having that awkward conversation about payment and risking a potential decline of the credit card, you have the opportunity to get to know your customer more fully, and but also you have the opportunity to set that next appointment for all the unsold work. Overall, it allows you 
to be a much better business and collect the revenue that your shop is due. Gentlemen, I appreciate you guys being here. Yeah. Doc, I'll take it to, over to you. As I said earlier, this episode has been brought by three, brought to us by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. I would like to thank from 360 Payments, Jesse Meadow, and also Charlie Marcotte from American Pride Automotive in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Gentlemen, it's a brave new world. It's not 1984 anymore, but we're headed in the right direction, and I thank you both for joining us today. Have a great day. Keep up the great work. You too. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks very much.